for real? Yeah. All right. Welcome to the first edition of The Mediocre Mechanic. Today, <laughs> today we're going to be changing the brakes on the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. So you don't have to show the whole car. <laughs> so, you do have to show the whole car. We got, us, uh, we got us a jack here. We got us a floor jack. Three and a half ton. I probably don't need that much. It doesn't weigh that much, the whole car, but that's what we have. We got our jack stands, safety first, just like all my videos, safety first. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so we got us a, uh, got us a uh, impact wrench. It's uh, my son, Drew's. <coughs> it's uh, got like five million foot pounds of torque. That'll be fun because a lot of people will say, there's no such thing. Probably five million. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I got the jack on the uh, pinch weld here, so we're gonna jack it up. <laughs> One thing that will probably be good is if you put the emergency brake on. Now we're back. Okay, so emergency brake's been on the whole time. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna jack this up tall enough so I can get this jack in here. I'm gonna lift the jack off just a little bit. A plug nuts, 21 millimeter. Okay, take that away. You should reverse, make sure this is the uh, impact <laughs> So I mentioned this is the mediocre mechanic. <laughs> if you don't have an impact wrench, I recommend you uh, break those loose before you jack up the car. All right, so here we have the brake caliper. And the uh, brake pads in here. It's been, been raining, so we get a little bit of surface rust on here. And uh, so now I'm going to take off the uh, caliper bolts back here. You want to bring this in and show these? So we got uh, one bolt up top, and then one bolt down here in the bottom. So I don't know what size those are. I'll tell you that in a minute. <laughs> All right. All right. So it appears to be a 14 millimeter. So. We're gonna make sure we got that off the right direction off. So that's pretty easy. Not too difficult to get that one off. Top one's out. Go on the bottom here. Sometimes it's a good idea to turn the car wheel like to the right. Easier access to this, but uh, I didn't do that. <laughs> and now the caliper. Some guys will try to push the piston back before you take this off. They really don't need to, in my opinion. Just kind of work it off. Might not hurt to push it back a little bit. Push the piston back a little bit. And there we go. The caliper came off, just like that. Set that up here. Probably a good idea to bungee that up so it doesn't fall off, but I like to live on the edge. So I'm just going to set it there. We'll see what happens. Huh? Are you with me on that? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I do. I do have uh, some helpers out here today. So, Move it down. Yeah. So this is giving us the help in the mediocre mechanic. We got uh, <laughs> Kayla, Mariah, Avery. So we got the new Sawyer here, new pup. <laughs> we got Ashlyn on the camera. So. Be helpful. <laughs> so this frame here, well these are actually the brake pads. Let's see if we can get those off. Probably need to be extra other. See that? How thin that is? That's actually the pads. So we're, we're, yeah, we need to replace those. So it's a good thing we're doing brakes today. There's one pad. I don't know if I hope they don't need to reuse that. And there's the other one. That's about gone too. Here's a little indicator. 
Looks like it's been already, it's, it's uh, making some noise, so it's been touching the rotor, so it's trying to tell me that it's trying to, time to change. Sometimes you gotta make a change, you know what I'm saying? So we got some other bolts back here to take the load. I think they might be about an 18, I'm not sure, and I'll check and get back to you on that. You good. All right, so we have these bolts here. They appear to be a 17 millimeter. So got one on top, one on the bottom for this frame. <clears throat> so because the top one's kind of hard to get to because of this uh, strut bolt here. But I got these uh, kind of extensions that have kind of a wobbler end on it. I got those at Harbor Freight. Super expensive. Not really. <clears throat> we'll put that on there. And these are a little tighter, so we'll see how it goes. On uh, getting it loose, breaking it loose. It helps when you go the correct direction. I would turn those left. I'd turn those counterclockwise. That's just me though. Oh man, the edge. It's on the edge. And it came back to bite me. That'd be a lesson to you. You guys are kind of quiet. You got any suggestions? Turn it left. Dang, where were you? In other words, where were you a minute ago? <laughs> I'm usually pretty good at knowing my left from my right. <laughs> Today, I don't know. <laughs> That's crazy. <clears throat> All right, so we got that out. Caliper frame out, and I'm going to take these rotors in to O'Reilly to get them, uh, see if they get a mic, see if I got enough to turn them. They don't look too bad actually, so I might get lucky on that. I'd rather not pay for new rotors, but there are two, um, two Phillips screws here that we're going to have to uh, remove to uh, get that rotor off, so go grab a big screwdriver. You You're good. Me, you All right, so let's see how this you works here. Pretty good. Works pretty good, actually. Like this one. Oh. I think I might have stripped that one, so. <laughs> that stinks. Okay, so we're going to figure out what to do on this now, so we'll, we'll be back in a minute. All right, so. Mediocre mechanic stripped out the uh, Phillips screw head, so I'd recommend you not maybe use the impact driver on that. So with a combination of uh, drilling, drilling it out, and using this uh, old screwdriver from my grandpa that I got from my grandpa. I got a lot of things from my grandpa, so this is one of them too. I uh, was able to drill it out and uh, hammer this in and. Uh, get the top off so, so there you have that uh, I'm gonna recommend if you do this that you not reuse this screw okay I don't think I'm gonna reuse it <laughs> my guess is one will hold it fine let's see if we can get this off okay that's on there pretty tight so I think what we're gonna do we're gonna spray it with some PB blaster Behind you. PB blaster? PB blaster. Peanut butter blaster? Yes. Made with real peanut butter. You can't avoid getting it on the uh, rotor surface. That would help not to uh, be lubricated when you're trying to break. So, <laughs> well, there's congestion for you. All right, we're gonna just give that a few minutes, so we'll be back. All right, so we we gave it a few minutes, and it still wouldn't come off. All right, so uh, what we had to do uh, is <clears throat> let the PB blaster work. I used uh, 
combination of these hammers to kind of tap on the tap on it, try to break it loose. Still didn't work. What I ended up having to do was take this large pry bar, put it behind the rotor, put it against that, and kind of worked it loose. Uh, turned it, kind of worked in, and after a while, it finally finally broke loose. But uh, normally, I wouldn't recommend putting the pry bar on your rotor. Probably not the best best plan. But uh, anyway. Uh, so, uh, but then I did took it took it down to O'Reilly. It's a pretty thick, pretty good size, pretty thick rotor, and so it uh, wasn't too damaged. And so they were able to turn the uh, rotors. So 12 bucks piece to O'Reilly, get them turned. So I got those resurfaced, and now we're going to put it uh, back on the vehicle. So make sure you line up the screw holes here um, with the, the holes before. We got that back on, and I am going to put this screw back in, and like I said before, that other one I am not going to reuse that screw, and one's going to be fine to hold it, because actually all five of these uh, lug nuts will go on and just, just hold it on, so no big deal there. <coughs> Now. Okay. Alright, so what I recommend you doing, you got these uh, pins here, and those need to be uh, lubed up real good. Um, these seem pretty good, but what I'm going to do is I got a, they got a loose boot on it, so you can just kind of kind of hold that back and, and pull it out. So I'm going to put some of this uh, synthetic brake grease on it. Alright. <laughs> yeah, so put a little uh, grease on your pin there, and put a little more on it. Kind of work it in and out like that, and then just make sure you get that boot back on there so when you comes out, comes out with it. So, all right, so yeah, so if you don't put the grease on that, those get bound up, you get uneven wear in your brake pads. So, all right, so we've got these old uh, clips in here, we got new ones for our, with our new pads right here. Those. I think these are all basically the same. <clears throat> Put those in. All right, so we got the two, I think this thing's called the carrier. We got the carrier bolts on there. Those go pretty tight. I think it's about 50 or 60 torque pound, uh, foot pounds of torque. And so I'll probably get my torque wrench in a little bit. <clears throat> Some, uh, some grease on the back side of it to keep down the, uh, hopefully it helps it, and keeps it quiet. I think these are supposed to be pretty quiet anyway. I got the uh, Wagner Thermal Quiet. Something. Smear that on there. <clears throat> Make sure you put the pad side toward the rotor. I've heard stories. Put it the other way, so they're not going to do that. <clears throat> so that said, this must be a little in here. Sometimes easier can be a pain to get in. That's what it's in. Tip from the mediocre mechanic. Okay, I think you need to put the brake pads into the carrier before you put it on. 
the uh, back on. So we're going to undo that real quick. Yeah, so you know, you learn each job, you just learn something new. And that's how you become mediocre? That's how you become mediocre. Actually, okay, so again, we're learning more things. I think this is this is the indicator here that tells it when it's too low, and actually, I don't think we want that on the outside pad because it's getting in the, the, the frames in the way here. So, this one is actually doesn't have that indicator on it. So, let's see if we can make that work on the outside, and that one we could have probably just put on was still on. So we're getting to learn lots of new things today. Every car is a little different. It's the first time I've done brakes on the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. And let's see. What are you laughing at? A dog. What are you laughing at me? And there's our indicator that goes on like that. So Alright, so let's see if we can get this on here now. We'll probably have to take them off. So, anyway, so let's pause it while we get these bolts started. <laughs> Okay. All right, so we're gonna put that put this back on after getting the uh, pads in here the right way, the right pads, which I don't think I need to take it off now. And we know now we all know that. So now we're torquing this down to about I think it's around 60, 50 to 60 torque pounds. I have a torque wrench, but I'm basically human a human torque wrench, so I'm say that's probably about 60 pounds. We'll get a lot of comments on that. <laughs> uh, all right. So we got that. Oh, now here's an interesting part we need to do. All right, you got the master cylinder here. You want to take the lid off of the master cylinder because we're going to have to press the uh, piston back into the caliper. That's going to force fluid back up through the lines. And if you have the lid on it, it's going to be like pushing against a brick wall. So we need to have the fluid be able to come. And it might overflow. It might be a good idea to put a rag around that. But it looks like I've got some room, so I'm not going to worry about it. So close it. All right, so earlier you remember I was living on the edge and didn't strap the uh, caliper up. Uh, but then it fell off a couple of times and I was afraid living on the edge might cost me money. So then I, so then I strapped it up. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and unstrap it now. So what I like to do is put the old brake pad on the inside this piston here. And as I twist, twist the C-clamp, you'll see that the... Uh, piston is getting pushed back into the caliper and we'll get that flush because the uh, the new brake pads are so much thicker than the old ones that you have room to put it on. Alright, so that should be good. Back it off. Just in there. And Sure, our line's not twisted. Do that. That's pretty good. And then that should slide on here. And then we've got our caliper bolts. Now, one thing I ran to on the other side that I did was when I was trying to uh, loosen this, this uh, pin started spinning on it. So I had to get an 18 millimeter wrench and Kind of hold it. It'd be better if you get a, a thinner one. So you get in there, you can hold that, hold that with a 18 millimeter. And then I got a 14 millimeter. Make sure we're tightening. That's about 22 foot pounds of torque. 
again, the human torque wrench. All right, so that uh, has got the one side done. So the, uh, there's the car starting <laughs> over there. So, um, so yeah, it's looking good. <laughs> All right, thanks for tuning in. First edition, the mediocre mechanic, and uh, hope this has helped you out. I know it's helped me out to get new brakes. Alright, P.S. It's a good idea to spray things down with uh, brake parts cleaner. Okay, once you get uh, everything back together. So we're going to do that. I missed. <laughs> we're going to go off of there. Alright, I'll dry real quick. Put the wheel back on. There you go.